talk just a little bit more about emotional memory and such things. I think some of you, especially you elderly, but some of you that live under a great deal of stress. Some of, some of your jobs can be very stressful. Some of your marriages, some of your real-time problems and stress. Sometimes people work so hard in a church and trying to please everybody else that they forget about themselves. They forget about what they need. And during that time, you start to lose your memory. Uh, you start to forget where you're going, what you're doing. And I had shared a little bit when I was very, very ill, how God brought my memory back to me. And he did it through the word, but he didn't do it through uh, book and verse. He doesn't work like that. He, he never did. The mind filters all of that through there, and you almost miss what God's doing. Because you, you know, you could even pick up a book that'll have in parentheses, uh, every sentence it'll have, well, this is where the reference is. <laughs> if you know the word of God, you know that's in there. And nobody can take that away from you because you know that, because you read it. Because you sat and you pondered on it, you talked to God about it. So what are you doing with all of those things that only mess you up in your thinking? You know, <laughs> sometimes when I write a letter and by the time I get the greeting gone, I forget what God gave me as a message and have to go and pray because uh, and when you're older, this distraction is so easy. The problems are so easy. I mean, when you have so much on your mind and, and you don't even realize it, you come into the house and you take your keys and you lay them somewhere and you have no idea later where you laid them and you need them. And it never occurred to you to even think about it. Sometimes I would have to tell myself deliberately, now, remember, I put them here. But even that is like positive thinking, depending upon the flesh. I depended upon the word. And every time I found myself in a condition where I could realize, because I told you about when I had lupus and I lost my memory. I mean, I didn't just have lupus. I had so many other uh, physical problems. And when they sent me to a therapist, they figured they knew I was having blackouts in this memory. And they figured I was going to panic big time. And they had like the therapist said, all of these books, which were therapy books, were written about people like you. Well, and she says, but you don't need them. And all of them wanted to know why. Even mental institution people that worked in mental institutions wanted to know why. Well, here's a little key to it, of what God did with me. I depended upon him so completely for every step. And when I would find myself, and there were times I would be under a great deal of stress, and I would get in the car, know where I was going, and drive down there. And I think I've put this in a video before. And I, by the time I got to the corner of the street, and uh, it was a four-way street uh, turn, and I, and I would say, oh, where am I going? What am I doing here? And the Lord would speak to me and say, well, you're, you're going to the doctor's office. And I'd say, oh, okay. And then I'd look, one, three different directions. But which direction do I turn? Because I have doctors probably in all three of them. You know, eye doctor here, medical doctor here, hospital here. I, I got all, all three of them. So I'm sitting there at the red light. And, and he says, well, this one if you remember, is straight ahead. And this is Dr. So-and-so. And, uh, and so you just keep going straight and you'll see it. And I, and I think, wow, thank you, Lord. And I just go on. But just before when he trained me in that, I mean, he literally trained me in that where I didn't have to confess the word, go to, all I had to do was trust him and he would bring it and then thank him. That's all, 
It was just it, as simple as that. Because after he shows you the way and talks to you about the way and proves to you this is the way, you don't have any problems. So in the beginning of it, I would, I would say, Oh, Lord, you promised me in your word that the Holy Spirit, you would bring all things to my remembrance. What am I doing here without a memory? And that's when he would reveal to me what direction to go. That's when he would speak to me of where I was going and what was going to happen. Because that one little scripture that I believed with all my heart, you promised me. You promised me that you would not desert me when I get older. You promised me that you would take care of me when I get older. If you're a widow and you're under a great deal of stress, you promised me that you love widows and you'll take care of widows. When you're a mother and you're under a great deal of stress and you're concerned about your kids, you promised me, Lord. Your word said you'll do this. Now, I didn't say, Lord, in such and such a place, in such and such a book, and on this verse, you said this. No, 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 no. He knows where it's at. And I would simply, I know where it's at. But if you think I went through all of that quoting, all of that bringing to my remembrance, all of this, no. It was an experience. It wasn't a memory thing. It was an experience and an interaction with God that brought things to my remembrance. It wasn't, oh, I've got to repeat, what did the word say? I, I've got to repeat it. Uh, Lord, you promised in such and such a word that there's, no, no, no. You filter whatever answers you get from God. You're filtering them through the flesh. You have no real contact. No real, you have, you've taken everything out of context and just filter it through your feelings and everything else and guess what happens you diminish his power you diminish his abilities to do what he needs to do whereas the way that I'm talking to you is you go before him in a second one second oh god you promised boom there he is there he is he never failed. Never once did he fail. Never once did he uh, prolong it or make me suffer or make me endure it. Because if I didn't get the answer right away, which you're on the highway, you need an answer right away. You're anywhere with anybody else. You need an answer right away. And so it was so wonderful because I could just draw on him like that. And I do this still to this day. And so he led me through every, all sorts of circumstances and situations where I would literally lose my memory. You walk into a room and you forget why you walked into the room. So you can sit down and think, now why did I do this? Where was I going? I try to retrace my... That's all flesh. Or you could say, God... You promised, and boom, it comes to your memory. But you have to learn that first. You have to learn how to allow that door to be open. You have to learn how to let him make your memory sharp. Oh, sometimes when I would get some messages, and, and I right in the middle of them, something would be taken off of me, and it would be taken away. And I would be tempted to be upset and go, where did it go? What do you want me to do? In a couple of seconds, and boom, he would come right back. And you would never notice that I had a memory lapse. So now I don't get them anymore because I constantly turned to him and asked him to help me. I trusted him to help me. I expected him to help me. Well, after all, he promised after all, he, he told me in his word that when I got old, he was not going to forsake me. 
He promised me in Psalm 91 I was under the shadow of his wing, and if I tripped on a stone, the angels would bear me up. You promised me, Lord. My healings, many of them came. You know, if I fell and I broke a bone, I looked up at him and said, but you promised. And sure enough, the miracle would be so great it would cause the doctors in front of me to shake. Why? Not because of me. I'm nothing. In the sight of God, I am the woman that he died for. Just like you're the woman or the man or the child that God died for. You have the same thing that I have because he gave you faith. It's what you do with it. It's how he, you let him operate with you. And the small things that seem to be nothing are the very things that help you handle the big things, help you to overcome the big things. Because in that small little exercise of renewing your faith constantly, you learn that once it gets settled, you won't lose your memory at all. But you see, what happens is, when you get older, you've been told this, you've been told that, you read this, you read that, you, you know friends that have dementia, you know people that have this, you, you, and you don't know how to fight it, and oh, i got to go to the doctors, I need medication to help my memory, I need this, I need that, and oh, this is all because I'm getting old, it's because I should expect this because I'm getting older. And all of that comes to your mind. And most people, what happens to them, men or women, they go, they become afraid. And they go, I'm losing my memory. It's time. It's it's happening. What am I going to do? Now, this is all in the back of your mind where you're not even noticing. The enemy is speaking to you. The flesh is speaking to you. And you can't hear God because you haven't had enough exercise. You haven't had enough power with him to hear his voice. You haven't spent enough time in his presence to learn how to hear his voice. You haven't had enough of wisdom to know how to hear him. You haven't had enough of common sense that he gave you. You see, when you're faced with a problem and you're faced with the traumatic experience and the traumatic memory common sense goes out the window thoughts of being able to handle it go out the window what do you do then in seconds you become this person filled with fear filled with anxiety filled with unbelief many people say well you know should a young person suffer this much anxiety well you know what take the word of god teach that young person to go into the word and let god speak to their hearts as to why find the core of the problem most people go to say christian psychologists quote and unquote i told you psychology is a lie it is. It's a lie that makes you go through this door, that door, this understanding, that, this word, that word causes you to judge other people, have an opinion of other people, ha- judge yourself, have an opinion. It causes you, you to go through, remember, manipulation. It causes you to manipulate circumstances, manipulate. And you're putting that into your mind. You're putting that into your heart. And you don't even realize you're replacing God. Because you see, God is right there all the time with the answers. But you don't think so. You don't understand so. You don't even believe so. How do I know all this? I went there. I did that. I, <laughs> I came out of it because God led me out of it. He led me out with just a couple of tiny little, the reality of Scripture. The power of it. He didn't lead me out through memorization. The Holy Spirit came to me and spoke to my heart and brought to my remembrance that he promised me. 
It's a big difference. You can seek first the kingdom of God. You can, like Jesus said, you read the Bible. He told them, you read the scriptures and you think they tell you of me. But really, you're searching for me, but you're not finding me. Because you're looking in all the wrong places. I think of the reality of children. If they're not bonded when they're little, they don't they don't have it. They don't have any feelings. They don't have any understanding. They become psychopaths because they don't know how to love and they don't know how to receive love. You know how God made that baby to be right there and look up at you while you're feeding it. Look up and feel that love constantly. The interaction between the mother and the baby. Well, that's the way it is with God the Father. You're his children. You belong to Jesus Christ, his son. And it's a constant looking up at him. A constant feeding off of the milk of the word. A constant reality. He's God. You could trust him. He loves you. And you're being fed that bottle of milk. But you see, the day comes where you have to grow up. And instead of you just feeding and feeding as though it's a dead word, it has to become a reality. And you have to grow up and start eating meat. Oh, there's so much in the knowledge of God the Father. There's so much knowledge in God the Son. In their personality, the way they are, who they are, and how they interact. Take a good look at how a mother and a father react to their children. And you will see exactly how God reacts to you. Only he is everything. Only Jesus Christ has power over everything. But you can't, you, you, you run there and you want to grab a hold of that power and you want to put it here and you want to get it here and you want to use it. And you want to you run, 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 run with the flesh. Oh, I got to do this and I got to do that. I got to tell so-and-so I got to do. No, you don't. You got to be still. Know that he is God. Allow him to separate you and speak to you and teach you. You see, you'll learn things from him in that separation. You won't learn from the church. But you see, the church, the cult type of church, has covered all their bases. If you separate, you're just sensual and devilish because you separated from us. Never mind that you have a whole mess here. Never mind that you're not really doing what God wants you to do. Never mind you're mocking God and be, by doing your own thing. And treating God and putting him in a corner and keeping him there. And you're being like Jesus. This is what you're doing. You might not know it, but that's what you're doing in the sight of God. In the sight of God. Which is very real. Because you're asking for trouble when you do that. Because you can't mock him. You can't mistreat him. You can't talk to him. You can't do those things. For it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Because when you pull up a call and you say, it belongs to me. God gave that to me. And you sit in authority. And you love to say long prayers in front of people. and Let everybody see how much you've got. And you thrive on that. The day will come. It just goes, disappears. Oh, I, I know it does. I can't tell you how many times God just literally came and took everything. And I mean, I had nothing. And if I wouldn't have had God, truly, it would have never come back. I would have had to start all over again. Because you see, he only wipes it out to get you refocused, to get you to a place where you realize, hey, I don't have what I thought I had. I better get it. Get it. (laughs) 
I'm laughing at myself. And how many times I went through things with God, had no understanding for what I was going through. It was a blind faith. A blind faith of believing. Hey, you said it. (laughs) You know I can't take care of myself. Oh God, I fell over here. Lord, I just can't do this. That's what I'd say to him. I don't even want to. And he'd look at me and smile. And he would say, I know you can't, Marion, but I can. And when you're the weakest and can't do anything, I'm the strongest because I can do everything. Now, see, that's the word. But he didn't come to me in the text of book and verse. But you see, (laughs) I recognized him just like you should because when he speaks to you he doesn't come to you and say well I in Mark such and such a place I said this therefore this is what you must do he don't come like that that's that's the way they receive him that's the way they take him when they sit down and pray for hours before they give you a, a, a scripture or two well it has to resonate with me first Why isn't it that that whole Bible about Jesus Christ hasn't resonated in your life first period that when you stand behind the pulpit, you don't need to study and you don't need to read. When God gives you a message, it just flows because it's in here and it's in here. But when you have a form that tells you you're a prophet, Oh my, will you work hard to prove you're a prophet. You will, oh, you will cry, you will wail, you will beg God to make sure what he told you comes true, lest you be exposed to all people that you're false. The real prophet, he could care less if you call him a false prophet. He could care less what you think about what he says. All he's got on his mind is what he says. That's all he got on his mind. All he has in his thoughts is what God did and what God will do. And it's not all about predicting the future. It's not all about going and telling you what's in this man's heart, that man's heart, and I can see into the eyes and know this man's this and that. It's none of your business. It's really none of your business. What is your business is to give out a message that belongs to all people. It doesn't belong to you. If he gives it to you and it's a gift, then give it. But when you give it, you give it with the understanding that you think that you're something so special that you can give and and you can see and you can I've told you I have all those gifts I don't need your approval I don't need anybody's affirmation I don't need one man or one woman to come into my life and tell me and I don't need them to come and tell you you should listen to me I don't I don't want it I don't want anybody to come and say, well, you know what? You should listen to Marion Lynch because she this and she that. (laughs) Nope. Nope. I don't want that. I mean, if you are led by God to do that, then more power to you. Then thank you. And that's what God wants. And I do not, I do not find fault with you for doing that. That's your call. God told you to do that. Do that. I'm busy in my call. I'm busy doing what God says. And some of you, you're hitting 60, 70. And I'll tell you, when I hit 70, oh, there were just so many changes that happened in one year than happened in all of those 70 years. 
But you see, it doesn't happen that way with every person because their time is different. That's why you see a 100-year-old as sharp as a tack and you'll see a 70-year-old that don't have any brains in their demented because it's not according to what you think and feel it's not according even to your age you can be <laughs> you could be 85 and still be as sharp as tack you could be 90 and still be sharp enough with your reflexes working good enough to drive and never have a problem like my neighbor 91 and I'll tell you, when that little lady would come to our house and she would walk, she did not walk like a person who was 91 years old. She didn't have her cane and she didn't shake and she wasn't upset. And when she come and sat down, she sat down with confidence. I know she had to be a true believer. Oh, no, she didn't believe like I did. She didn't pray like I did. She didn't, but she was a true believer in Jesus Christ. That I knew for sure. Because nobody has to be like me. Nobody has to have what I have. What they need to do is have Jesus Christ. And I saw that she had it. And when her time comes, I'm, I sit there. Rest assured, she's safe. She's got God. Nothing's going to take that off of her. Not no matter what her body goes through, no matter what anything, it's nothing's going to take that off of her. Because he took up residence within her heart and mind a long time ago, before she ever met me. And that was made her such a joy to my husband and I. I mean, she really brought a lot of joy in this house when she would come and visit I have other neighbors that are younger, and when they visited, I think it was great. But this one in particular, we marveled at because she was already the age that we haven't reached yet. And we knew, we looked at her, and we knew it could be like that for us also. For you, you can overcome this temptation to believe because the second you see you lost your memory on something the first thing that comes to you is panic anxiety <gasps> oh it's happening i'm gonna lose it all i'm gonna you know and you think of the flood of all the things that the enemy has told you in the flesh all the articles you read all of the internet things you saw all of the people that talk among themselves all of the messages that you heard heard preached it all tells you you're going down. I can remember. <laughs> I think I was like uh, 60. I said, when I get in my 70s, I am going to be healthier than I ever was my entire life. And that happened. That literally happened. I got a ticker that never quits after open heart surgery and I've been healthier more than I have ever been in my entire life so they really happen and it's a you're crazy when you get older you don't get better you don't get stronger you don't get you're crazy <laughs> well maybe that's where you're going if that's what you want to hang on to that's what you want to believe but I believe God and I believe Psalm 91. I'm under the shadow of his wing. And I'm going to live a long life because I love him. He said, because I set my love upon him, he'll do those things for me. So whenever I have a problem of any kind, I can <laughs> say, God, you promised. I don't pray a long, long prayer. I don't plead the blood and plead the blood. It's got to be this way. It's got to be. Thank you, Jesus. There's times that I have to do that when I'm fighting a demon for someone else. But even then, it doesn't take very long. For myself, seconds. Oh, 
I'm laughing because, boy, there are so many en enemies that are positive they have the truth. And they keep looking and salivating, hoping I will fall. That, you know, if I miss a message, it has to be that what I prayed last night came upon her. <laughs> uh, have at it. Because you cannot pull God down. And you cannot deliver God unto Satan in someone. You can only do that to yourself. So while you're delivering another soul up to Satan, Satan is really coming through your door. I'm not saying knocking at your door. I'm saying he's coming through your door in ways that you cannot see and you cannot hear. And you won't know till it's too late. For you have no business touching when you know someone is doing good and helping people and you play with that you're playing with God because he said leave them alone for anybody that feels like that about me they can't say anything bad about me he told that to his disciples he said but Lord they're, they're not with us so what they were with him he knew he was wise enough. Praise the Lord, he was Jesus Christ, and he knew that no one had to be like you, like you, and like you. He knew that. He understood that even before they did. Uh, i got to take a look and see how long this video is because I don't want to go back into 50-some minutes. Oh, this is about right. It's about 35 minutes. That's usually the size I like to give. But today I really have a long message, so I'll split it up into to different parts. I really want to reach people who are suffering anxiety and fear of thinking they're getting dementia. Oh, I, I'm not saying dementia isn't real. It does happen to people, like I told you had a brother that got it and I and I tell you there's two different kinds it's all according to your heart you could literally be the way he was where he wound up enjoying his life how could a person who has dementia enjoy their life he was such a great guy in Christ that when it, a dementia hit him he didn't fight it. He, when he knew it was coming and they told him there is no doubts, he practically welcomed it. He didn't say, oh, come on. Uh, no, he just sat there and he accepted and he enjoyed life anyway. He didn't worry himself about, oh, it's happening. It's going to be gone forever. It's No, he didn't do any of that. And he wound up in a home playing games with other patients just like a little boy again so you know his heart was filled with joy when his time come his heart was filled with joy or you could be that fighter that hater that the despiser, that one that holds things against people so the instant you're told that something's happening to you you get mad why me this is I deserve better so-and-so doesn't deserve better but I deserve better you know when they told me I had to have open-heart surgery I could have gone all those different places why me I don't know do you know what I did <laughs> I just looked at God and I said God are you telling me it's my time to go home and he said no I want to use you that was before all these videos and and I and I'd say oh, okay so then I just plow into Satan get your hands off of me I'm not going with you anywhere I'm gonna live and not die and I shall declare the works of the Lord now I didn't say it's in this book and it's in this verse I just said it when I, I when I went to that person that needed a heart transplant, 
and I didn't even know him. I didn't go up to him and say, according to the word in this book, in this verse, this is what, this is, I, no, I didn't. God had me take his hand and say in the name of Jesus Christ, you shall live and not die, and you shall declare the works of the Lord. And I walked away, and he lived, and he didn't die. And the doctors, they didn't want to see him for a whole year. After being diagnosed with having to have a heart transplant, and they didn't think he was going to live through the heart transplant list. Because I don't God in me doesn't operate like you. God doesn't operate the way you've been told, the way you've been taught. What you've been taught about religion, doctrine, that all hinders your power to reach God. It, it comes right before you. You take a step towards God and boom, that comes. And if you don't accept it, then you just know you don't have God. And if you don't go that direction and you don't go that way, you just know you don't have God. Listen to what I'm saying. That doctrine, if you don't go that way, it's not God. So here you are, you've got God, God's come, he's coming on the scene, and boom! The doctrine says, no, no, no. How can God get that picture to you to help you to understand what you've done to yourself? To help you understand how you've deceived others. Because you have to self-deceive yourself before you deceive others. I got a call from somebody in Ireland. Just, anyway, he, he was telling me about how the things he thought and felt were happening to him. And I practically gave him a message very similar to this. He began to share with me that in Ireland, the Irish people were being replaced. That they are so many in immigrants, and he was telling me all the different countries they're coming from, they can't even speak English, but they are replacing the Irish people the way they're doing here in the United States. They're doing that for a reason. The people in power want to stay that way. And they know through the internet that these people have gotten too smart for them. They can't lie, and they can't cheat, and they can't steal anymore. So what they do is they just simply replace them with the ignorant. And by the time anybody figures it out, it'll be already done. And boy, does the enemy love people that can do that. Because they laugh at the Christian. They laugh at them because they get so involved in trying to do what is right, in trying to please God, because it's through religion they can't get there. So they laugh because they've been in that religion and they know exactly what it teaches. And they laugh at that religion. And in so doing, they wind up laughing at God. Now their end is going to be pretty bad. But when you don't receive God, and you receive a form of, of godliness you're the one that needs help more so than they because they might not know what they're doing but you do <laughs> oh I don't know why I'm yawning but maybe because I don't sleep very much at night I always wind up talking to God all night and then it happens so fast <laughs> I realized I didn't sleep but it's up to him to keep me healthy keep me straight keep me where I need to be I think I'm gonna let you go I just realized what time <laughs>